So today we're going to be looking at the BAE Systems Hawk by Airfix 172nd scale, and this is how it's come out. Let's get this box out of the way. Focus here. So this is the Indian Air Force version. I went with the smaller uh, wing tanks, smaller drop tanks, but I included the Sidewinder missiles because I thought it just added a more interesting look to the aircraft. The decals, and there are a lot of decals here. I mean, it's like Carl Sagan. It's billions and billions and billions. I didn't use all of them because there's just stencils for, you know, no step, etc., etc. So I use some. But there's many, many, many decals on this decal sheet. One thing you also have to look out for, uh, unless you love this option, is that the roundels that you see here, if I can hold this, that the center, the green disc inside there, that green disc is a separate decal that you would put in. And that's done because sometimes they can't get the registration correct when they print these decals. So to remedy that, they have you put that separate circle in there afterwards. And that's really challenging. Uh, and I can't, to be honest, I can't be positive that I got it in there accurately. But it looks pretty good from my eyeball anyhow. Uh, so this is an overall gray aircraft. All right, try not to bounce around too much here. So, and the underside is also an overall gray. And you can see that the numbers are there. There's a little bit of silvering with the decals. And the landing gear is a bit fiddly. I did have a problem with it breaking off during the construction. Um, but, well, that's really my fault. The one thing I did find difficult with this kit was up in this section in here. To put this piece in, some of the cockpit bulkheads needed to be trimmed heavily in order to fit that piece in. Uh, I can try to show you that in the instructions. Hold on one second. Let me pause. Yeah, so when you see here, they've got it to, just to drop in. These pieces here, these bulkhead pieces, tend to be a little out of alignment somehow. I don't know if it's me if when I drop this cockpit floor in, or if this part's too big. I had to trim a lot of this off. Luckily, the Airfix uh, plastic is is soft enough that you can scrape that down without too much difficulty, and then drop that piece in properly. Took a lot of work, you know. And this area here was. Uh, right here. Some of this is also challenging for similar reasons. Getting that to sit in into there properly took also a lot of uh, sanding and filing. So just a heads up on that. Um, again, I'm going to show you the other options that were available with this. As you can see, I chose the Indian version. And you can look just at all those red numbers, the vast number of decals involved for that. But you also had the option to do an all black British trainer here. Again, with lots and lots and lots of decals, but that was another option. And then there was the demonstration version, which I opted not to do because of the multiple colors and the excessive decaling to get that just right seemed a little intimidating to me. So anyway, this is how we ended up, Oops, sorry, and that's where that project went. I was going to show you where the uh, Mirage F1C ended up, but to be honest, it is still in the painting stages. I have the underwing stores done uh, separately, and I'm currently masking it to paint. Now, what I do is I have an outdoor painting station in my garage where I do all of the work of, of that sort and it's not a 
heated or air conditioned building. So for those of you who are not familiar with Rhode Island in the summer, while Rhode Island is pretty far north in the United States, it does get pretty hot in the summer. So we just had a heat wave and spray painting or airbrushing in 90 degree weather with like a hundred percent humidity is not a good idea it doesn't go very well so we had to stall on that project for a bit and this one was already painted in in the decaling stage at that point so there you go so we're looking at this one and the mirage 1c we'll we will get to that eventually in the meantime i can show you a few other kits that uh Either we've built it, you know, in the past on this program, and just get you caught up on what what happened with those. Hold on one moment. So next up, we had done a couple of these Minicraft Hazagawa Airfix, uh, well not Airfix, but anyway, these um, Mig 17s, and I'll show you a couple of different variants of that. So this is. Get it focused there. So this is a MiG-17 that's done in the Indonesian Air Force. Uh, still working on it, because you can see I still got the uh, masking tape over the cockpit. So just finishing that up. And there's another one there. I'll show you that in a second. Yeah, so that's basically what the 17 looks like there. And here's the one from before. That we did back in 2020. That's the Russian version with the missiles on it. So that's where those ended up and how they came out. And I got one more we can take a look at before we call it a day here. And lastly, we have this kit, the Hazagawa 148th Nakajima Ki 27 Nate. That was something we were working on back in 2020. And I never really got back to you guys and showed you how that thing came out. So it'd be nice to take a look at that now. Oops, let me get this positioned. Here it is. So what I did with this is I got a separate set of decals. So this is the Manchurian version of this plane. Oops, come on, stay focused. This is a separate decal sheet for this variant. So the Manchuria had a uh, Japanese-controlled puppet state, and they built a number of these airplanes in that area, in that state. So this is what this is. This is the uh, emblems of Manchuria. And we can see underneath, it's got that fun... Uh, circular emblem got a few more touch-ups I might do on that otherwise it's pretty much done but there's, there's always things you see after the fact that you want to touch up so this is how the KI-27 came out and thanks for the uh, the comment from one of our viewers explaining that this here on the wing is a gun camera. I was not sure what that was, but that's what I was informed is a gun camera. They weren't always equipped on these aircraft, but it did say in the instructions to put that on. Although now that I look at the one on the box art, it doesn't show it on the one in the box art, it does No, it's not even on that one, but it does show it in the instruction sheet. That's why I put it there. But our uh, our viewer said it's not something that was normally carried, but that's what that is. So that solves that mystery. Anyway, so that's what we've been working on. That's what those kits are looking like now. Hopefully we will get back to that Mirage F1C at some point. But I wanted you to see where we were with some of these projects in their painted and finished state states. So there we go. Um, We'll see you guys soon in the next model building workshop, and we'll see what we'll unbox next. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you guys soon.